So in this video, I want to talk about um, good arguments and strong claims and clear structures. I want to talk about how do you know that your argument is being effective? And of course, the real answer to is it being effective is does it do what you want it to do to the audience? So if your goal was to make the audience have an emotional response, did they have an emotional response? But we don't always know how the audience responds. We often publish something and then we don't actually see the audience, so we can't actually gauge that. So the other ways that we can tell if our arguments are effective is we can generally apply some basic heuristics of, you know, did I make my claim strong and clear? Did I provide enough evidence? And so on. So a good argument is flexible and specific. So I've talked before, and many of you got in your feedback from your previous assignment, that you need to be really specific. So it's not enough to say, I want to talk about, say, I want to talk about National Novel Writing Month as the example from the previous video. Um, that's not enough. I need to say what I want to talk about about National Novel Writing Month. And so in this case, I want to investigate, is it a good teaching tool in composition classrooms? And so that's an important question. We could ask a lot of other questions about it, but that's what I want to do. So the argument also needs to be flexible, though. So if you're familiar with some engineering terms, there's um, there's rigid strength and there's tensile strength, right? So uh, a brick wall, for instance, we think of a brick wall as really strong. But the fact is a brick wall can be really easily knocked over by something like um, a earthquake or a hurricane. Brick walls are not great for those things. Um, and that's because while they have rigid strength in that they aren't going to bend or anything and they can handle pressure going down on them very well, they can't handle being pushed back and forth very well. At that point, they just crumble and fall over. So what we need there is tensile strength. And so you'll notice that in regions where earthquakes and hurricanes are really common, buildings will tend to be steel reinforced because steel can bend or they will tend to be built with triangles because a triangle, when you push things, is much stronger than a square. A square can just flop over. Um, so we have to think about flexibility as a kind of strength. And we often don't think about flexibility as a kind of strength. We think about it as a kind of weakness. And that's exactly the opposite, even in arguments. So the strongest arguments are not the ones that say, I am right, and I won't listen to anything that says I'm not right. They're the arguments that say, you know what? I'm right, but so are you. Or maybe I'm a little bit wrong. Let me change my argument. And that's okay. So the best arguments are going to be flexible. They're going to include counter arguments. They're going to engage with those counter arguments in an intelligent and respectful way. Um, they're not going to just dismiss or they're not going to do straw man fallacies, which is where you set up an imaginary counter argument and that imaginary counter argument is obviously flawed. And so you're able to easily just knock it down like a straw man, you know, like you have a, an imaginary set up target that you just can knock down easily. Whereas a real person is going to resist that. So it's, not a straw man. Um, so you have to be very careful about that. Um, so strong claims include counterclaims. This is kind of counterintuitive. Why would I give voice to something that doesn't agree with me? And it's precisely because you want to have that flexibility and you want to demonstrate that you've already considered those counterclaims and you have reasons why even if those counterclaims are totally valid, your claim is nevertheless the one that you're supporting. So other things that a good argument has, it needs to have structure. Just like those buildings I talked about, they need to have some kind of a planned structure so that there's support for each level of the building, no matter what kind of pressures are being put on it. So in order to do that, you need to make sure that every claim that you have has reasons supporting it. So you say what you're saying, and then you say why that makes sense. 
And then every reason that you have needs to have evidence underneath that. So a, a good foundation of evidence is the good foundation of a good claim, of a solid claim. So you'll have more evidence than you will of reasons. You'll have more reasons than you will of claims. So it builds like a pyramid structure. Um, and like we said, triangles are strong. Triangles are good. Um, so you want to have evidence and reasons supporting your claims. You use warrants to tie all those together. That's the mortar in the wall, basically. Um, some warrants are stated and some are assumed. In certain situations, you know your audience already agrees with the basic assumptions. If I am, for instance, um, you know, we just can all agree education is a good thing. You probably wouldn't be here if you didn't believe that. And I can assume that about my audience. And so I don't need to say that necessarily. But in some cases, we can't necessarily all agree on a thing. And so you have to say why that evidence connects to that reason or that reason connects to that claim. And so you have to consider your audience very carefully. Um, Good arguments also let the evidence guide the argument and not the other way around. So the most common mistake I see, and I know we all did this in high school, you say, okay, here's my claim. I just need to find things to back that up. And what you do when you do that is one, you risk the straw man arguments or you risk ignoring counter arguments. And again, that's going to weaken your argument. But the other thing that you risk is your evidence is not going to actually fit your claim. So if you build the roof of your house first and you didn't measure your foundation, how are you going to make that fit? And the answer is you're going to do some really crazy things that don't make sense architecturally. Um, lived in those houses. They're not good houses to live in. Uh, so you want to make sure you build that foundation of evidence first, and then you can build the rest on top of that. Now, that's tricky because you have to start with a question, which has to start with some kind of a claim. But the trick here is that flexibility, that ability to bend one way or another as your evidence suggests that you should. Um, so it's really important. I mean, I have so many times gone into a research project firmly believing, you know, I'm just going to find more evidence that affirms what I already believe about this and come out of that research project believing something completely opposite or in a completely different direction than I went into the project. This National Malvo Writing Project, for instance, is one of those examples where I started it with this almost like evangelical, yeah, we're going to use National Novel Writing Month because it's so much fun. And then I started looking at the numbers and I was like, wait a second, even though the number of participants continues to go up and up and up, the number of winners, that is people who succeed, has kind of flatlined over the last few years. So why is that going on? And you start asking those questions when you look at the evidence. And those questions are where the really interesting research happens and the really interesting claims come from. So make sure that you approach your research with that flexibility and that specificity. So remember, good arguments are flexible and specific, and good claims are supported by reasons, which are supported by evidence. So we'll talk more about reasons, evidence, and warrants later. All right.